Welcome back to this episode of the series we're doing on 13 life-changing lessons no one's ever told you by George Mack on the Chris Williamson YouTube channel, which is the Modern Wisdom Podcast. And today we're going to be discussing the um, basically strategic ignorance and why you'd want to do that. Anyways, we're going to roll the clip and then we're going to comment on it later and go into more detail. So let's do that now. What do you mean when you talk about strategic ignorance? Strategic ignorance is essentially this idea. So you have the terminology ignorance is bliss which is such a weird upside down Nietzschean worldview that we calling something bliss as an insult. And you essentially, you essentially realize that there's so much things you can pay attention to in the modern day. There's so many things constantly getting uploaded that you have to be ignorant. And there's this, oh, well, oh, you're ignorant about this. And it's like, well, what do you think about the situation in Djibouti? Or what do you think about the situation in Eswantini? Or what do you think about the situation in Jakarstan? And you go, what? And what you'll realize is quickly, you don't even realize these countries existed and they have no clue what's going on there. And they didn't realize that Jakarstan's a country that I invented. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you essentially realize that everybody's ignorant, <laughs> but some of us are looking at the stars. So essentially you have what I call low agency ignorance, which is kind of just top down. Like you're just reacting to what's on the newsfeed constantly. And by definition, you're only ever going to consume 0.0001% of the world's events mm. because it's just the way of the world. And then you move on to the next current thing versus high agency ignorance is at least going, listen, I'm going to be ignorant, but I'm going to try and be intentional about what I'm ignorant to, who I'm going to consume, what I'm going to listen to. Mm. So we're all ignorant, but some of us are looking at the stars. I absolutely love how you phrase it there. We're all ignorant, but some of us are looking at the stars. I actually put that as a quote right down there. And... This is something that I had to come to terms with because like back in 2020 during the election, I was like constantly studying the politics, watching all the YouTube channels, the reaction, the, we'll talk about this a little bit more in the next clip, but it's this stream of crap that just keeps spewing at you, but you're like us versus them mentality. It's absolute garbage, but um, yeah, as of 2022 and it's 2024 now, so there's a decent amount of time that's changed. Probably that number is probably a lot higher, but 3,000 hours of YouTube content was uploaded every single hour of the day. For reference, there's only 692,000 hours in an average life. And I think that brings you up to around 79 years. But every two hours, there's about a lifespan worth of content uploaded to YouTube. So you can't watch it all. You don't even want to watch it all, like, but you need to look at what you're spending your time on. I think I talked about it up above here in one of the other videos where you have to, once you accept how, here we go. Um, yeah, so 4,000 weeks. We talked about it in this video. So you have like, I can't do more than one thing with my time and this is what I choose to do. Like that thought alone is so impactful. Cause it's like, I choose to do this with my time and it gives you this like sense of freedom and also like of ownership over how you spend your life. And then there's also other bits up here. Let's see. Uh, yeah, the more you embrace your limits, the more meaningful life becomes. Like, when you embrace that you can't see everything, you're like, okay, what what do I choose to see? And then you appreciate that more because you know you can't see it all. Um, yeah, it's not about becoming more efficient. You just end up with more work. Then we have the joy of missing out makes choices meaningful. Like, if you lived forever then you could not enjoy every single day because like or not even try to enjoy every single day because you don't have to like you're living forever you can do whatever the hell you want but because you're gonna die like you have to you have a very limited amount of time that's a very freeing thought at least for me it is and if you meditate on it, i think it'll be for you too uh yeah so back down to the bottom here and the next clip that we're actually going to show talks about, this is from his 800 episodes summary version he did, but it goes into detail talking about the exact way the cycle worked and reflecting on like 
old version of Jason who used to be into the politics, watch the Steven Crowder and all that stuff, and just get so caught up in it. It's like, it's such a perfect demonstration of the crap that's on the media today. All right, next one. This is cool. And this one got retweeted by Elon, so it's got his seal of approval, whatever that means. <clears throat> the culture wars shiny object cycle. Number one, some woke news story hits the press, like cats suffer from racial discrimination or screwing in light bulbs need to be recognized as a valid sexual kink or something. Number two, the right-wing antibody response activates. Look at how insane these people are. Matt Walsh quote tweets the article and calls it obnoxious. This is the problem with our convenient, decadent TikTok society. Number three, this reaction causes the story to gain infinitely more traction than it ever would have done by signal boosting the original fringe scenario into a much bigger event. Number four, the left-wing counter-response activates. Right-wingers lose their mind over one woman with a particularly dark cat. The Daily Wire has a meltdown over an insignificant troll article. In times when the original story is actually less insane, this can include a defense of the original article too. Cats actually can experience trauma. Minimizing this is the real problem. Number five, the right-wing re-reaction kicks into gear. Apparently I'm insane for pushing back against cat trauma. See, this is the problem. If we don't stand our ground, these blue-haired idiots will take over the country. Number six, finally the touch grass meta-reactionaries steam in. The real issue is people talking about this issue. Look at how silly this whole thing is. It's time to check out of the culture war. We should reconnect with what really matters. You should move on to the ranch next Ryan Holiday and hammer fence posts into the ground for the rest of time. And this is something I noticed over and over and over again. This culture wars shiny object cycle, this sort of six stage process. And it can go begin with the left uh, signal boosting something from the right, and then it can happen in reverse. But the cycle is banal and it's excruciatingly repetitive. So I wondered why it sustains our attention if basically the discussion follows the same format every single time. And the reason I realize it, my, my idea is that it's because each story is sprinkled with just enough novelty to give it the illusion that this is a new, different event, which legitimates the pushback. So you see this perfect example with the trans flag. So each year, some new group gets added to the trans flag. And then that, even though it's basically the same, exactly the same uh culture wash shiny object cycle it still goes through the same six steps but people will justify the criticism of it by saying see we haven't seen this trans flag with people who suffer from a gluten intolerance included in it before or someone with a club foot or or you know a, a person who's afraid of flying and it's like the 20th season of lost when they're back on the island for the seventh time and they need to escape but this time it's winter and it just sprinkles sufficient novelty so that people are always, ah, oh, well, you know, this does seem to be legitimate. I haven't quite seen this one before. And the shiny object cycle does my head in. It does my head in largely because I get captured by it. And I see a bank rewriting a classic fairy tale into a boss bitch remake and calling it Fairer Tales, princesses doing it for themselves. And I think, this is fucking dumb. Where's Douglas Murray? I need him to decimate this idea with me. And it's cathartic. It makes you feel good to tear this sort of stupid idea down. Calling out insane insights written by idiots is so compelling and fun and easy to do that it's like being a cocaine addict with Pablo Escobar as a next door neighbor. There is an unlimited supply and the memes of production are just whirring at maximum RPM and we're all caught in the vortex. And it was Douglas actually who reminded me why I'm getting so exasperated with this cycle because it's a distraction. It's a distraction from our attention being focused on things which are actually meaningful. And not just meaningful in a you will remember this when you're dead way, but in a there's other issues to talk about that are more important way. Like there's entire American cities with fentanyl epidemics and 80% of suicides of people aged 18 to 24 are men. Like I want to hear Jordan Peterson talk about dealing with finding meaning in a world stripped of all of its guardrails. And I want Nassim Taleb to be writing about applying complex maths to 
simple life problems. Many of the smartest people on the planet have had their attention captured arguing about whether men are men and women are women or not over the last few years, and even more of the less smart ones as well. And all of our minds are held hostage by an endless cycle of shiny objects that aggravates both sides and it makes them feel righteous for standing their ground. And I think this is a bottomless pit. I don't think that it's going to stop. I think one of the biggest detriments of it is the us versus them mentality that it creates. Like back when I was following news stories like this, I actually had a PDF on my phone with chairs on to go that far back. With a PDF on my phone with like links to articles and resources so that when I got into a discussion with someone about these specific topics, I could show the links and the actual information that would help my side. So it basically just was me going around to a bunch of people trying to start a debate about these topics and me like, look, man, my phone says this, like, you're wrong, my phone, like, just stupid, like, literally stupidity. And you get so caught up in it. It's this us versus them. And you don't just walk around and enjoy talking to people because it's always like, oh, what side do you fall on? Like, it's, it's the most retarded thing that, like, not the most, but one of the stupidest things I've got myself caught up in. And if you're in it yourself, I highly recommend stopping watching the news. I haven't looked at it in months. And I'm happy. Like, I literally do not care if the, I don't know, I'm going to get shit for this, but if the 2020 election or 20, well, yeah, what was it? 2020 election showed me anything. It's that your vote doesn't really count. So, uh, <laughs> take that for what it is. Or, uh, yeah. Anyways, um, there is one benefit to actually these types of news articles and, that can be seen here. So this is The Levels of Energy by Frederick E. Dawson, and it is a book that basically talks about, it's a really amazing book. I have videos talking about this, but it talks about how you can kind of think of it as these levels to your energy, and you start off at like guilt, shame, psychosis at the lowest end, and then you move up to apathy, grief, fear, craving, anger, antagonism, pride, and then those are the low energy cycles, well, the low energy levels, and then you have contentment, courage, willingness, acceptance, intelligence. Above that, you have joy, beauty, power, love, humor, un unconditional love, ecstasy, bliss, oneness, and divinity. And you can kindly, like, for each one of these levels, people kind of exist at them, and you can tell which level you exist at because when you're at a certain level, you will necessarily perform certain activities, have certain ways of thinking, and it's like, it's mind blowing how accurate this actually is. But if we go down to these lower levels, the one benefit to this, because everything is kind of relative, you can't say these things are necessarily evil. If you're coming from these lower levels, if you are filled with guilt, shame, psychosis, apathy, grief, fear, worry, shyness, um, like moving upwards into anger is actually extremely beneficial. Like if you can take someone who is ridden with guilt, shame and hatred, and you can make them angry at other people themselves or anything, like you actually did them a huge favor. Like, cause from anger, they can then go to criticism, complaining and blaming, and then to thinking that they're superior and, they're just gonna be really arrogant about themselves. And this is kind of like where those news stories fall. The us versus them, Republicans versus Democrats, gun rights, no gun rights. I mean, there is more to it, but a lot of the actual news stories and the way they're portrayed in the media fall on these levels of us versus them. My side's right, your side's wrong. And, but you have to first, like, you can't really skip the levels. You have to move them up through into uh, pride, superiority, integrity. Uh, I'm just gonna skip that word. I'm drawing a blank. Um, Agrians, uh, ah, whatever. 
into routine, functionality, and boredom, and then courage, relaxation, fun, willingness, kindness, and like activity, optimism. Like you have to move them up through those levels. So there is a role that those news articles and those us versus them articles actually play. And it's not necessarily bad and you shouldn't necessarily crap on all of them, but you want to not necessarily get stuck there. I mean, there's so much higher levels to go to, so much better places to mentally be that when you get stuck in the us versus them, you lose the ability to really like love humanity and like love other people because you're so caught up in, are you like, are you part of my tribe? Like, are you, are you, like, do you agree with me? No, you don't agree with me. You're, you're evil. Like, you're stupid. Like, it's such a, such a waste of energy. But, well, I say it's a waste of energy for me because it would be a regression down the scale. For people at the lower levels, being able to tap into that anger and feel that superiority is a lot more beneficial than having someone who is like just full of apathy and despair and hopelessness. So there are levels to it. There is, I do, I do love this. Like I will uh, be changing the end screen for this video. I'm gonna put a playlist up here for the other ones I've made, subscribe to the channel over here. And I'm gonna put a video talking about the levels of energy right over here. So click that and thanks for tuning in. Peace out.